these distances. What are we going to do? Well, you know how GPS works. You've got satellites up in the sky that are beaming out signals down to us. Yeah. So depending upon where we are on the surface of the Earth, by measuring the delay between those signals from the different satellites, we can find out exactly where we are. Because we know where the satellites are and we can measure the delay. Yes, I can get that. That's right. The only problem is we haven't got any pet satellites. So instead of using radio signals, we're going to be using acoustic waves. Noise. Exactly. Yeah, OK. So, so what we need is a nice noise source. Ah. I've got my car. I can start it up. It makes quite a racket. Big V8. No, I, th I think we can do better than that. All right. It's this. I did wonder. It's in here. It's in here. Let's okay. see. Can I help? That's louder than my car. <laughs> It's quite handy, isn't it? Good enough. Yeah. We've got the gizmo over here, and we're going to take this with us, and we're going to be making the noise as we go down and measuring the delay as we go. Are you coming with us, Chris? At 20 degrees centigrade, sound travels at 340 meters a second. By walking away from the truck, then stopping and playing some notes, we can measure the delay between the sound leaving the speakers back at the truck and reaching us. John's computer uses this time difference to calculate a distance. Now! OK, let's yeah. try here. Right, OK. Um, go on then, take it away. I immediately noticed the delay between Chris playing and us hearing the sound. Let's rewind and check that again. Chris strikes the strings, yeah. then there's a delay yeah, before right. you hear the okay. sound from Go the speakers. Take it away. The electrical signal travels to the speakers the instant Chris plays, but it returns through the air at the speed of sound. When you get far enough away, the delay becomes quite obvious. John's computer measures the time it takes the guitar notes to get from the truck at A to us at B. From this, knowing the speed of sound, we can work out how far we are from the start. So a half second delay would mean that we're 170 meters from the speaker stack, our own version of a GPS satellite. One hundred and seventy. There you go, thank you very much. So although what we've been doing was a bit, well, frankly, odd, if you were watching from over there, probably, but we were using a signal to measure distance. And it doesn't matter what the signal is, we use noise, it could be anything. If you know how fast the signal is travelling, and you know how long it's taken to get from one point to another, then you can use that information to work out how far apart those two points are. You don't need a guitarist. <laughs> The satellite signal the nuclear subs listen for contained data on the time it was sent and where it was sent from. And the more satellites you have, the more precisely you can fix your position. Measuring the delay from the time a signal was sent to the time it's received, you can work out how far you are from a satellite, just like we calculated our distance from the guitar amplifiers. Today, there are 24 global positioning satellites orbiting the planet, sending signals back to Earth. Now, GPS receivers use exactly the same principle, only with greater accuracy. They compare the distance from four or more satellites to determine their position. Your GPS receiver can work out where it is to within 10 metres. That's fine for directing your car, but completely useless in building a bridge where an error of 10 centimetres would be a disaster. The Milau engineers fixed GPS receivers to the deck and piers to keep construction on track. Their system was way more accurate than car sat nav, but it still wasn't enough. Tiny temperature fluctuations and building stresses could send the piers and deck off course. And although successfully guided by the satellite data, they needed to double check their GPS positions against a rock solid reference point. So they anchored one to the ground. 
The engineers took GPS guidance a step further. They bolted a receiver to a fixed point on the side of the valley, and it provided a reference signal for all the other receivers on the piers. And because it's anchored, it reduced the error of the GPS signal down from meters to millimeters. The network of monitors on the bridge constantly check the accuracy of their position data against these known points. And all the time, the towers climb skywards. So that's how a technology for locating lost subs positioned with pinpoint precision the world's tallest piers. But Milau's steel roadway, weighing five times more than the metal used to build the Eiffel Tower, needed support from above as well as below. And that's where cables come in. When the deck was being pushed out over the top of the piers, the engineers used a web of cables to support the end of it. And they held it in place even when the winds blasted up the valley. So how did 36,000 tons of steel roads stay put in a valley notorious for storm force winds? The answer lies with a series of accidents in a German silver mine. In winter and early spring, Europe's weather can turn on its head. Low pressure over the Mediterranean sucks cold air from the north down through the south of France. The Tarn Valley is pretty much your perfect winter, channeling mountain storms along its length. Winds here can reach 130 kilometers an hour. That's a pretty severe test for the cables here on the Milau Bridge. They take the strain, but it's only because of a series of mining accidents that they exist at all. Throughout history, miners have hauled heavier and heavier loads up from below ground. But this put dangerous stresses on the traditional pulleys and ropes used. Man has made rope since the earliest times, and depending upon where you lived, you could choose from a range of different plants to make it. In Asia, a relative of the banana plant was used to make manila. And then across much of Europe, cannabis, of which this is a relative, was used to make hemp, amongst other things. Rope is usually made by twisting fibers together, but it does have its limitations. To understand rope's limitations, I've decided to break some, and materials expert Clive Sevier is going to help me. OK, Richard, what we've got here um, is a hydraulic press yep. with a load cell here. Yeah, OK. So it's going to pull on there, yep. and this... That's going to tell us the force that this is supporting. Yes. And this is rope as was used initially in the silver mines, as exactly. well as everywhere else. Yeah. I'm going to start the machine by pressing, I'm guessing, the big green button. Taking up strain. Right, so we're just starting to stretch the rope now. This is a 10 millimeter hemp rope, about the well, thickness of my little finger. Now we're just starting to increase the load. We've just hit 30 kilograms. 30. Oh, the rope is stretching a lot, it as we call lot, it. Yeah. yeah. And here we go with the load increasing. We've just hit 100 kilograms. 200. And we're now on 260 kilograms. Yeah. And now we're just hitting 300 kilograms. And it is stretching. Oh, there you go, look. And there we go. The rope doesn't break suddenly, but it gradually, um, different strands of the rope start to break individually. Um, it's still supporting some oh. load until eventually, eventually the final strand oh, will look break. At that. And that's your lot. Got to 640 kilograms. That's nearly two thirds of a tonne. So the way it breaks is useful, That's but right. the weight at which it breaks is not so good. The rope breaks gradually. The single strands break, but the rest of the rope um, still holds some of the load. And so it doesn't sort of just give up. So we need now to test something. Exactly. To earn more, the miners needed to haul bigger loads. So they were looking for something stronger than rope. Which is why alternatives like metal chains came about. Trouble is, compared to rope, metal chain has a nasty way of breaking. So now I want to test a 10 millimeter metal chain, the same diameter as the rope we snapped. I'm gonna film it with a slow motion camera while using water from a friendly fire crew to gradually increase the weight in a skip. Are you ready for us to film? Yeah, yeah carry on. on. Okay. 
and the load's now starting to go up. So we've got to 800. Remember the same 